Welcome back, all you OGs out there. Whether you're an online gamer, an original gangster, or just an old geezer like me, this is Yuli1961 for Old Gamers Never Die. And I'm back here on Conan. And in this video, I'm going to try to answer some questions for people who have left me comments or pinged me on Twitter or in my Discord and asking the question, okay, I, I'm just... I'm a little bit nervous about getting in and playing Conan on a server with a bunch of other people. I'm just learning. I'm not really sure about the game and I don't want to look like an idiot or I don't really like playing with other people. Or maybe, you know, you just want to try things out. So one way to do that is to play single player mode, but single player mode comes with its own challenges because the reality is you're going to be juggling a lot of the things and when you're not online, nothing's going on. And that can mean you're just kind of struggling to get started, struggling to progress in the game. And hey, I'm here to help. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk through my settings on single player that makes the game fun, challenging, and a little bit less grindy, but not, not easy by any means, and makes it so that you can progress even though when you're not playing, nothing's going on. How does that sound? All right, let's take a look. First, we're going to want to go to our settings. So we're going to escape out of the game. Now, the way you get to your settings for the server, which is basically what you're playing on a single player, you have to hit escape. And on Xbox, PlayStation, whatever it takes for you to get to this screen here, I'm not really sure what it takes, but go to settings. The first thing you're going to come to is your video screen. Now, I, my video settings are basically set to what's recommended by my video card. I've got a decent computer and basically everything's set to max. So depends on your setup, your system, what needs to happen here. If you've got an NVIDIA card and you're doing the NVIDIA experience or whatever, it'll tell you how to optimize it. Play around with this if you're having problems with the game lagging, running slow, whatever may be happening, or maybe it's running great and you just want to see a little bit better detail, we can bump it up a little bit. But I don't mess with this. I let the computer tell me what it should be. <laughs> On audio, there's a great advance in Conan. Every video game should do this because, you know, my God, my ears get blasted out every time I start a video game, seems like, because their intro volume is set to max. And it just, it's annoying because you're, you know, you try to log in the game and maybe you're playing with other people and you got to say, whoa, 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 hold on, don't, don't talk to me right yet. The game is loading. In Conan, you can now reduce the intro video volume. You can cut it all the way down to zero if you want to, but I like to at least have it going so that I know the game is starting. There's some other buttons here, like push to talk. If you're going to be having co-op, where you invite other people to play in your single player world, then you might want to have that. But really, it's a single player game. You're not going to need any of this stuff. So you can leave it as it's set. And then we come to gameplay. So here is where you're going to start making some adjustments. And I'm going to kind of walk you through what you may or may not want to do. Okay. So we'll start at the very top. Of course, language is whatever language you're comfortable with. Nudity. Conan has three levels of nudity. It just does. That's the way the game is built. It's the world of Conan. So I, you know, Funcom doesn't apologize for it. I, I can't apologize for it either. This is where you set how you want to see the game. This Conan's a little bit unique. There's a server setting that defines how nudity is handled in the game. And then there's the player setting. So if the server setting is no nudity, then you're not going to be able to change it in the game play setting it's just going to be none that's all it's going to come up there's nothing you can change it to because it'll be set in the server settings which we'll get to down here if the server settings are at partial or full then you can select none if you don't want to see any of that if you want to see partial if it's allowed you can set it to that or full if it's allowed but basically you're experiencing the game based on what you want the game to show you so if you're not comfortable with this kind of stuff just click none and be done with it okay but just to emphasize this setting only works depending on what's set in the server setting the rest of this stuff is checked off here based on the default i just leave it alone but scroll down here to where it says at the bottom show bar values now show bar values what this does is if you are playing the game and you will have enemies and your your 
followers and everybody will have a health bar over their head as long as you haven't disabled that if you check this not only will it show the bar but it'll actually show the value of the bar which is incredibly helpful if you are getting ready to say attack a boss that might be really really healthy you know maybe your weapon's almost ready to break and you might not want to fight that boss right now so i would check that that way you know right off the bat what everything's health is and that helps you out a whole lot in how you play the game on controls, honestly, this, I just leave it as it is. If you're having problems with the game, and it depends on where you're at as far as playing video games, if you're comfortable with your mouse and your controller being at the speed that it is, great. If it's too glitchy for you and you need to slow it down some, you can slow it down here. If it's too laggy and it takes too long for you to turn, you can speed it up here. Play around with that to make it work for you. I don't change those when I'm playing the game. All right, the next screen is your key bindings. And I'll be honest with you, since the chapter two update, half the time when I click on this, it crashes the game. I don't know what the deal is, but I'm just telling you, I have to restart the game and then usually we'll try it. It works, okay. So here's where you would set things up differently if you wanted to. You have the opportunity, you can change your binds to different letters, mouse presses, things like that. For me, I'm one of those guys that inventory and I make sense to me. I guess it's from art, but <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those. And so this game, it's tab. I change it. I put I for my inventory and then I use the tab button for dodging because frankly, I, my hands don't work that way to get to the control key and dodge. I don't do a very good job of dodging anyway. So maybe if you've watched any of my videos, you already know that. But here's where you can do that. You can just click on the thing you want to change. You can hit X and clear it out, and then you can put another thing on there. If you've done any video games where you change key bindings, it works pretty similar. It's just got a lot of things that now that they didn't used to have so that you can do long presses and things like that, which is awesome. And now here's the nitty gritty. This is where things all come together. If you're going to change the settings on your server, this is... If you're doing a single player game, you still have a server and it's basically what's on your computer, right? So in order to access these settings, you're gonna have to make yourself an admin. Now it's real simple. There's two ways to do it. One is in this screen and it's simple as clicking the button, make me an admin. Since it's your single player game, you don't need to put a password in unless you put something in here at some point. So all you do is click that button and you're an admin. Another way to do it, if you are in the game, you can hit the tilde button, which is the key to the left of the one key on my keyboard. And you'll see there's a little line down there where I can type in something and I type in make me admin and you can hit there and it'll do the same thing. You're already allowed to cheat because I already have set that up. If you want to get out of admin, you can just type in make me and you just no spaces, but it doesn't have to be capitalized normal and you're no longer an admin and you don't have any of the admin cheats or any of that kind of stuff. So if you want to set your stuff up and then go back to playing regular, it's that simple. All right, so we're going to go back to the settings and we're going to go to server settings and we're going to click on make me admin. Now I have access to all these buttons here. Okay. The difficulty level, civilized, decadent, and barbaric, this is basically easy, medium, and hardcore. And it'll set all your settings up according to what button you push. But you don't have to use those buttons. You can go through these settings and set them up yourself, and it's not hard to do. All right. And I'm going to walk you through it so that you're not, you don't have to be intimidated by it. All right. So you're playing by yourself. It's a single player game. You don't have to worry about PvP. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff. So you can skip all the way down through here. You don't have to worry about ownership, none of this stuff. If you want to have sandstorms, which again, that, that's part of the game for me, so I make sure I leave that checked. It's going to be checked by default. Clan size, tethering distance. Clan size doesn't matter, but tethering distance may if you decide to play co-op with some friends and invite them onto your private game. That's basically how far they can be away from you and not get disconnected and lag out. I don't play a lot of co-op. I've got servers that I provide to the OGs. And if you're interested, there's a link to my Discord in the description of the video. Go to the Discord, check out the Conan channel. It has all the information about my server and how to get on there. And you can go wild. Exiles Lands is currently open. I also have a server for Savage Wilds, which is a modded map for PC. Unfortunately, mods don't work on console. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this because what I'm doing here right now is no mods, none. So so these settings you can use on a console, PC, either one, doesn't matter, okay? This one, this is where you set the maximum nudity for your server. And you know, you set it how you wanna set it. If you set it on none, like I talked about under gameplay, then the person playing can only play it on none. 
If you set it to partial, the person playing can set the gameplay setting to none or partial. They cannot set it to full. It won't work. When they go into the game, it won't be, they, it might show up like that, but it's not going to work. One other thing to say about the setting here is if you have kids that you allow to play this game and you as a parent don't want them to change that setting, you can set it here to none and you go up here and type in a password for your admin code. Even if they click on make me admin, if they don't have the password, then they're not going to be able to get in here and change that. So that's just, you know, some help from one parent to another. If you're going to let your kids play and that's, that's something that you're concerned about, set it to none, put a password up here for admin and then don't share your password and they can't get in here and change the setting and even if they change it in the gameplay setting it'll just be whatever you set it to here voice chat again you're playing single player it really doesn't matter what this is set on because you're just going to be there if you're chatting in your own head then you hear it regardless of what you have this set on that is about it for this screen i believe yes okay so then let's go to progression so in here, I just leave everything as it is. You know, if you want to speed your process along and get your XP rate multiplier up to, you know, whatever, five times, you'll blow through your levels really fast and you'll get to where you want to be. But if you're just interested in getting to top level so you'll have all the perks, there's an easier way to do that. If you want to play the game and be challenged with the game, then I just leave it like it is. I would not, I, 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 you get plenty of things to do to boost your levels up pretty quickly just playing the game at, at the vanilla rates for XP, the time it takes, or the kill multiplier, harvest multiplier, and the craft multiplier. All these experience numbers, I just, like I said, I just leave like they are. Day and night cycle. Now, here's where you might want to make some adjustments. And I would say it's easy, and it is, but it's not intuitive. How's that? It's, does that make sense? Sense. So if you want to make the night short and the daytime long, because nights on this game are dark. I mean, really dark. And you can change the gamma on here, and the, that's in the very beginning. It, let's go back to video real quick. You can change the gamma right here and make it brighter if you move that number up. You can also hit that tilde button while you're playing and type gamma and then space and a number and bump it up. 3.8 is really bright. The problem with doing that is you, when the daytime comes, you're just blowing out <laughs> the highlights of everything. So then you're back to setting it back to whatever it was. So I would say set your day and night cycle so that it makes sense to you what i use for day and night cycle is the day speed i leave at one so this is the speed at which 24 hour cycle goes so just normal the daytime speed so how much time is counted as daylight hours okay so how much daytime you have and you would think, okay, daytime speed, if I want to make the day longer, I would multiply it by a whole number. But if you want to make the day longer, what you need to do is multiply it by a decimal. So a good, and, and you can try this out. It basically, these settings will make your nighttime last about two minutes. <laughs> and the daytime lasts a really long time. But that's the way I like to play. You play around with this some, but if you put 0 0.10, then the day is going to last a very long time, basically 10 times as long as it would if you left it at one. All right, the nighttime speed. Now, this is the one we want to speed up. We want it to go be night shorter. So here, we're going to move that to 5.0. So my night is going to go by faster at five times faster than it would normally go by. Dawn and dusk, I just leave alone. And then catch up time that's for other people joining the game again if you're playing single player this doesn't matter okay the next thing is survival now survival is again it's going to be up to you how you want to play the game if you want it to be challenging i just leave the things the way they are if you go back to the general like we talked about earlier, setting civilized, decadent, and barbaric is going to change the values there. So I'd set your values here, and then you can tweak them along. But yeah, you, know, you can do it just as easy here. If you don't do anything, it's going to basically put you at the middle of the road. Okay, so we go to survival. Everything is at 1.0 and i have it the default is drop equipment on death what that means is when you die everything in your inventory is going to go on the ground and you have to go back to your body and get it for me that makes the game more fun it's something that i you there's the risk and reward factor of playing the game and getting yourself into a situation and making sure you get back out of it and you know what if you don't you, know, you pay a price for it and as long as you can get back over and get your stuff well you know it's not such a bad situation right the other thing that the game does with the sorcery now in it is there is a spell that you learn about about halfway through the sorcery.
sorcery process that allows you to recall your corpse, which means if you cast this spell and you don't have to have any points spent in corrupted any of your attributes to be able to cast that spell, then you can get your corpse back with everything that was on it when you died at your base, wherever you have your little circle set up. So for me, I just leave it checked. If you want to play the game in a way that you're not having to worry about losing your stuff when you're out there, then you can uncheck it. And when you die, everything that was on you will be on you when you revive, respawn in your bed or, or bedroom. That's a preference. I should leave it on. I like the challenge. If you'd rather not have to go through that, then that's fine. Everybody can lose your corpse. You're the only one playing. It doesn't really matter. And like I said, I'll just leave these things here as they are at 1.0. All right, so then the next thing is combat. Again, this is another one where I like the game the way it's set up. I think it's it's fair, it's balanced. If you're playing the middle of the road type, if you're a new player, maybe you might be a little bit concerned about it. But these are default values. I just leave them as they are. You can, you can look through these settings and decide if there's something that you want to tweak a little bit as you play the game, but I, I don't see a reason to. Um, there is a target lock in this game. It is the Q button. It doesn't automatically happen. And I don't know what it is on controller, but on the keyboard, you have to type Q to auto lock, and then you can fight with the auto lock on. If you don't want to use the auto lock, don't hit Q. <laughs> and leave this check just in case some someday you want to use it. And it'll be there. And you don't have to worry about where was that. And then the next one we have is harvesting. Now here's one that people go crazy over. All right, so item spoil rate, you can move this around, but the fact of the matter is, this isn't like playing on a multiplayer server. Since you are playing single player, when you have the game turned off, nothing is going to change. No spoiling is going to happen. No time is going to elapse. Everything stays where it was when you signed out. Now, unless you want to leave your computer running with the game running when you're not there, then you don't need to worry about adjusting this. It'll, it's The rate is fine. The next thing is harvest amount multiplier. Now, I see a lot of people, and I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. I used to bump this up all the time because I wanted to get as much stuff as I possibly could as fast as I could to be able to progress, make the things because I was by myself. I didn't have other people helping me to do stuff. Well, I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. And my good buddy Dax is what showed me so much better because here, if you bump this up, you can pump it up like, what, I think the most ago, like almost, well, probably 10 times. So you go up to 10 times. Well, what does that do for you? Well, then you just get encumbered faster because you're getting so much stuff every time you hit a tree. Leave it as it is. Don't do anything here. And I promise you, we'll get to a setting down below that's going to help you with that. Resource respawn multiplier. This one I do bump up, and I usually bump it up to about five. You can bump it, double it, triple it, whatever you want to do. Basically, this allows things to respawn in the world faster when they're harvested. And the reason I do this is because in single player and even on my servers, people that play don't have 20, 30 hours to invest in this game a week. They have a couple hours a night, maybe. And they don't want to wait or travel miles away to get a resource because the nodes are all farmed out. If I set it up faster, everything responds faster. Everybody gets a chance to play. They're not worried about, you know, well, somebody just got all the metal over here. Now I'm never going to get it tonight. I've got to go all the way on the other side of the map. Doesn't happen if you bump the resource respawn speed. Man, that's a tongue twister up a little bit so i usually run it about five times land claim radius multiplier you don't have to worry about because you're playing single player crafting okay here's where this all comes together crafting time multiplier leave it at one it, you craft stuff pretty plenty fast as it is if you want to bump it up fine do whatever you want to here but i leave it at one thrall crafting time multiplier this is how long it takes for a thrall to become a follower in the wheel okay now again simple not intuitive if you want your thralls to get done faster you might think well i'll just bump this to five times or ten times or twenty times and they'll get done that much faster that's the wrong way it has to go below the decimal point so i use this i do 0 0.10 that's plenty fast for me it gets a level one thrall done in a basic wheel without a taskmaster done in about 20 minutes. You start putting taskmasters on there and you can speed that up dramatically to around two to three minutes 
per person. That to me is, it's not instant and you can do it instant. You can put it at zero. I think it'll just completely, you pop them in there and they pop them back out. There are mods for PC that allow you to just put them in the wheel and they are automatically converted. But I want to make this so that anybody can do these settings, whether they're on console or PC. And here's a way to do it without having a mod. So what I recommend is putting it at 0 0.10 and that's pretty fast for a single player. On my multiplayer servers for the OGs, I run it at half of what it takes for a normal brawl to go through the wheel and the people that play they're fine with that it works for them and since it's a continuous world and it never shuts down well mostly never shuts down then that's fine because even if they get them in the wheel before they leave then they're fine the next morning that person is ready to go so we've got our crafting time multiplier left alone craft thrall crafting time multiplier set at 0 0.10 for single player fuel burn time multiplier you can bump that up and it just takes longer for wood to burn things like that again I, one is fine for me it, it seems to work out well now here's what i was taught to offset this harvest rate is crafting cost multiplier all right so hear me out here this is how much material is required to craft an item and it says this is what it means for fuel burn is raising the increases of fuel time they never fixed it here and it's been like this for i don't know probably as long as this game's been out there in other words the description doesn't really tell you what this does hey funcom fix this because it's silly if you want to be able to speed your way along to craft items whether it's building pieces or whatever else you don't want to do creative mode you just want to play the game like it would normally be played instead of bumping up your harvest rate turn down your crafting cost then you're not encumbered all the time the materials that you collect you can bring back and it takes less of them to craft the item that you want to do and you can set this for whatever you want to if you increase it it's going to mean it takes more items so you're going to want to do something like 0.25 is what i run and that takes me a quarter of the stuff to make the same thing it would take if I had it at one. That makes sense? All right, so then we go down to building. This is the option they put in with the creative mode and being able to do this. Clicking build anywhere will allow you to build pretty much in a lot of spaces that you weren't able to build in before, like inside caves, maybe closer to different bases. That might be something you wanna do just for the aesthetic of it or whatever. Maybe you like to build in caves. I know a lot of people do, it depends on the game and the day of the week, whether I wanna build in a cave or not. But if you click on that, you can build more places. It does not let you build anywhere. I'll just say that. <laughs> it just makes it so it's easier to build in lots more places. Stability loss multiplier. This is basically if you build things and you have a foundation, you can build three tiles out and then you can't build anymore. If you bring this down to zero, then there's no stability loss and you can put anything wherever you want it. If you're a creative builder and you want to be constrained by the laws of physics as much as physics appear to work in video games, then take that down to zero and you don't have to worry about it. Leave it at one. It's standard and you know everything's great. If you start raising this number up, who knows what you might be not able to build. So that's the default. I'll leave it there. You're not going to be playing PvP if you're playing by yourself, so you don't have to worry about that. Building abandonment is the decay factor of buildings over time. If you're playing by yourself, because time is not progressing when you're not on line this really doesn't come into a big problem but i'd leave it checked just because you then you don't have to worry about it and then disable thrall decay this one i check it because i want to make sure that my thralls don't disappear on me that said zombies have a tendency to disappear or go invisible no matter what you put here so you can put it here you can string out your days do whatever you want to in this setting zombies are still glitchy and even with the chapter two maybe especially with the chapter two nerf they're still glitchy and i've already had them disappear and be invisible while i'm just as soon as they come out of the ground so that's is what it is i can't fix it that's a fun com issue be great if they would fix that but uh we'll see they didn't fix it with chapter two all right and then we have chat again you're playing single player you don't need to mess with this purge here's something that you might want to tweak but i would say this if you don't want to have the purge you can turn it off and you don't have to worry about a purge anywhere anytime on the map but for me the purge is an important part of the game for a couple reasons one it gives me a way to test whether what i built is going to stand up to whatever's coming after me it's a challenge to fend off the creatures and critters that come after me and it's also a way to get high level tier four purge only thralls is the only place you can get them unless you spawn 
what I'm in. So I suggest you leave the purge on. And if you're worried about building in an area where you're going to get purged all the time, you pop out of this for a second and go back in here and we'll hit the map. If you build down here, there's no purges. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about a purge coming. You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. I have typically, if you've seen my other videos, I run a base down in this area near Center's Refuge because it's a great place for me to get thralls and I don't have to worry about being purged. There's a nice big beach area. There's plenty of metal, everything else like that around this area. If you never played the game, it's a great place to settle for a beginning character. And then you can have your base there and expand out anywhere else you want to knowing you're going to get purged there but here you don't have to worry about it so that's just another way to manage the purge process in the game i also don't recommend tweaking these numbers much because if you do then you're going to throw things off on the ability to get those high level purge thralls you can change the preparation time to longer or shorter that really doesn't matter that much but if you start changing the purge duration this 30 minutes is how long the purge will last if you don't make it through all the waves I think it's like five waves of enemies that come after you in the purge. And if you are well prepared and you have your own followers and your own setups so that you can take care of the waves pretty quickly, then you'll get through all the waves and you'll get the higher level purge thralls that typically come near the end. If you make this too short, you won't get through all the waves. You might not get through one wave and then you won't ever see any of those purge thralls. So it's something you can make the adjustment on. I leave it as it is. I have made that adjustment and regretted it. So I would just leave it as it is and not have to worry about it. The one thing that I might would change if I was going to change anything on here, well, two things. This allow building during a purge, that's something you may or may not want to have on. It's off by default. If you turn it on, then you can continue to build and repair your stuff while the purge is going on. If it's off during the purge, you can't repair anything and you can't put anything down. This next thing is really where I would make some changes here if I was going to play single player and I wanted to make sure that I didn't trip this thing out. Playing single player, you got to do a lot of stuff to fill up your purge meter, right? So if I go back to my inventory screen, which is I for me, you can see the purge meter here at the bottom. And if the purge is on, that's going to continue to fill up over time. Once it hits this line, it's going to potentially launch a purge anywhere between here and here. And so the way this gets filled up is by activities that you do. Harvesting, fighting, boss battles. All the things that you do are instances that will add to this purge meter. Well, since you're the only person playing, you're not going to fill that meter up very fast anyway. But if you find that it is filling up really fast, then you can go here in this section here here and just bump it up. Double that number if you want, right? Make it 84,000 items or, you know, half it, make it that much. Depending on how you want to do it, that would be the thing that I would adjust, not the amount of time the purge actually lasts. That way you have plenty of time to get yourself situated, ready to go before you, the cycle repeats itself. The next item is pets and hunger. Again, you've got this situation where we've got, this is the speed of crafting an animal pens. This is how fast you will raise a baby animal from baby to adulthood. And if you go with a whole number, you're gonna make it longer. If you go with a decimal, it makes it shorter. So when I do here, I do the same thing as I've done in the, the thrall. I put it at 0 0.10. And at that setting, it seems to be about right for me. If you wanna make Make it shorter you can you can put a zero in front of it and it's going to come out of like two minutes but it's up to you you've set it up how you want to do it but just remember if you put whole numbers in it's going to make it longer if you put in decimal numbers down to zero it's going to take it shorter food container range this is exactly what it says. It's the range at which animals can feed out of the food container. So if you bump it up you know, three times, that's three times the area that it will feed animals in. And if you've got a lot of tames like I end up doing, <laughs> you might want to do that. Just so you, you know, you're building your base. You don't want to have food boxes everywhere just so that everything can get fed. You know, put one down in the center and make it big enough so that it feeds everything and you're good. It's your game. You set it up how you want to do it. Use menu population. I don't know why you would limit yourself, but if you want to, if you're afraid that you might go over to a point where it starts taxing your system and you're lagging a lot, then you can do that and then it'll set it up. However, below here, I'd just leave it out. Maelstrom is only something you're going to need on SIPTA. So if you're on SIPTA, you do Maelstroms, not Purges, and you can turn them off. I just leave it the way it is. I don't play a lot of SIPTA, so you know if there's other people that play a lot and think that these some of these settings could be tweaked some, hey, let me know in the comment section below what that 
that suggestion might be because I, you know, I, I, we're, we're here to help new people playing and this is the way to do it. Feel free to add your feedback. And that's basically the server settings. Now, the only other thing there, because we have clicked this thing to make me admin, there's a couple things that you also can do while you're an admin. Before you jump out of that, I'll go over a couple of them. One is you can enter creative mode. So now you can just create stuff. If you've got a hammer, you can just pop stuff out wherever you want to. You don't have any weights and you can fly around, all that kind of good stuff. Double space makes you fly, double space again, put you back down a little bit. But anyway, this is how you go into creative mode and that's how you, you can just build as long as you got a hammer in your hand. If you don't want to be in creative mode, hit exit out of creative mode and you're not in it anymore. The other thing this gives you access to is the admin panel. Here's kind of a, a basically a cheat panel. I said earlier, if you want to blow through your levels and get 10 times experience, you can do that. But you know, if you just want to be level 60, you can type it in right here, level 60, apply, boom, you're level 60, you're done. And then you can spend your points and do whatever you want to do. You've also got cheat codes on here, like God, invisibility, and all that kind of stuff you can check. When you log out and log back in, you'll have to redo these because they clear the things out. Same thing here, you can set time of day. So if you want it to be noon, all the time you can hit noon and you can freeze time and it'll be noon the whole time you're playing this is different than the day and night cycle because when you come back in this won't be set that way and you'll have to redo it for me it's easier just to set the day and night cycle and not worried about it you can also spawn in anything in the game that's spawnable <laughs> things in the bazaar that that funcom is charging money for i'm not uh, you know i uh Hey, I paid for Season Pass 1. I got the crime coins to pay for Season Pass 2. And I'll just say it, I'm a little bit disappointed because, you know, at least in Season Pass 1, I got some build pieces and some cool stuff during the Season Pass. It looks like the Season Pass for 2 is missing a lot of that kind of stuff and you have to buy it all in the bazaar. Just saying, Funcom, I think you kind of got us on this one. If it keeps going like that, if each one becomes more just skins and less actual stuff you can do it with, I can see a lot of people just saying, you know what, screw the season pass, I'm not doing it anymore. That's just my opinion. But anyway, you can spawn in things, you can spawn in resources, you can spawn in gear. So if you want to test out the coolest weapon that you've heard about, you can spawn it in and play with it. Building parts, things like that, you can spawn in if you just want to do a build and you just want to grab one thing, you don't have to search for it, you can do it here. And then other things, like most of this is like food. You can also spawn in NPCs. I will warn you and you will screw it up just like I do regularly. <laughs> When you spawn in an NPC, if you don't check this box, they will spawn in wild and they will try to eat your face. So <laughs> make sure if you're planning on spawning them in to use them as your own followers, that you got that checked. Otherwise, you're going to be trying to spam this button really fast <laughs> to, to kill them because they're going to be after you. All right, that's that screen. Now, the other thing that you'll be able to do if you're in the admin mode is you can play around with your attributes and your knowledge. So if you want to try out different builds, you notice this button here, you don't get this in the game, but if you're in the admin mode, you will see it. So you can click on this and respend all your points here. What you can't do is corrupt your points unless you have the orbs of whatever, the green orbs. And in fact, you could go to the admin panel and spawn yourself in a bunch of them if you just wanted to try out stuff. But this is a way you can do it and try out different builds without having to grind through everything, get to the bottom. And then you go, you know, I wish I would spend my points differently. I probably would have a different play style or I'd like to try out a different play style. You can go here, reset your attributes, set it up the way you want it, and it's easy to do in this screen. You don't have to drink Yellow Lotus Potion, considering that's half the time bugged, and then you might lose some other stuff. You want to do this in single player. Hey, it's your game, and you're experimenting to find the best build. This is a way to do it. The other thing it'll allow you to do is you can reset all of your knowledge points. Understand if you're using Fragments of Power or going getting scrolls, you reset these, you're liable to lose that stuff. So just be careful about that. But you can reset your knowledge points and spend them on different stuff if you want to. All right. Well, that's pretty much it. That is uh, it's raining again. Again. Man, it was cold to start with, and it's cold again. I really do hope this helps you. I hope you get your game set up the way you want it. Gives you an opportunity to kind of experiment a little bit, try the game out if you're afraid to play with other people because you want to, you know, you you don't want to be the noob out there and you want to know how things work. Hey, give this single player settings a try. See if it makes the game fun. Tweak them to make it fun for you. It's your game. Play it the way you want to. You've got the freedom to do that in here in the single player mode. And then just understand that when you're playing with other people in private 
private or the official servers, the settings are going to be different. But at least this gives you a leg up and you know what you're doing versus just coming in cold and trying to figure it all out. Well, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate it. I hope it helped you out. If it did, hey, please leave a like. It really helps me out with all the YouTuberisms out there. It gets my video seen by more people and gives me a chance to spread the OG <laughs> message across the internet, which is, hey, let's have fun gaming. Everybody play games together and it just makes the world better, I think. It's my opinion, but eh. Don't forget we do have a Discord open. The link is in the description below. Drop by the Discord. Hang out with the OGs. Let us know what's going on. We've got Conan. We've got ARC servers. We're getting ready to do some other stuff too. So hop in. Join the conversation. There's usually somebody on. we got people from all over the world in the Discord. So there's usually somebody on no matter what hour of the day or night it is where you're at. All right. Well, that's going to wrap things up for me. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for watching the video. Y'all stay safe. Be well. And this is Yuli signing out.